Hey everyone, Pastor Jason here with the Bartlett United Methodist Church. A donut walks into a church building and approaches the pastor. Excuse me, pastor, the donut says, I don't mean to trouble you, but I'm very interested in being ordained and I was hoping that you could give me some pointers. The pastor, after taking a moment to accept the fact that he's speaking with a pastry, smiles warmly in response. That's truly a noble calling, he says. Most frequently, individuals who wish to be ordained begin by growing active in their congregation, and contemplating what they want to do with their lives, completing undergraduate studies, then seminary. While preparing for ordination, would-be ordinands work to excel in every regard, reaffirming their beliefs, devoting themselves to their calling, and going through rigorous examinations. And after completing all of that, a candidate may be ordained. That sounds really involved, the donut confesses. I'm not sure I have the time. Well, if you don't mind me asking, replies the pastor, then what made you think you wanted to be ordained if you're not willing to make a commitment to the process? Why do you want to do it at all? Well, the donut answers, I've just always been so holy. You may have guessed, but our topic is donuts. I Ordination, we're talking about ordination today on 3-Minute Methodism. Ordination is a gift from God and the dedication of persons' lives to God's service. Now, many Christian denominations use words like ordination and ordain, but there's also wide variance in how they're understood. In the United Methodist Church, we believe that all Christians are ministers, that all people, clergy and laity, are called and gifted to do God's work. But we also believe that some people are called to set apart ministries of preaching, teaching, administering baptism and Holy Communion, nurturing, healing, and gathering. Now, while an individual receives and discerns a call, the church helps to identify and shape that call, affirming and authorizing persons into the ministries of the ordained. The process of affirming and authorizing isn't identical for everyone, as not all United Methodist clergy are ordained. But for those who are, the process is lengthy. Mine lasted 11 years involving lots of education and preparation and interviews. And once all of that is finished, depending on what the individual has determined, they're ordained as either a deacon or an elder, with deacons exercising ministries of word, service, compassion, and justice, and elders exercising ministries of word, sacrament, order, and service. United Methodists affirm a person's ordination in community with a bishop laying hands on and praying over those being ordained. And if I'm honest, some days it would be easier to be a donut. But for those who are called to this way, nothing but responding to it and seeking to live it can bring such completeness and joy. That's all we have time for today, but we'll see you next week for another episode of 3-Minute Methodism. Until then, Stay holy, my friends.